all the time. Well, I have taken along the uh, Hooghly, and there are there is so much of pollution going into it. Varanasi is another place. Anywhere, actually, the way we are polluting the rivers, but the life in the river still continues, you know, because they ma Ganga. Hooghly is ma Ganga. So when you say ma Ganga is very precious and very important, you know, river in, in the lives of Indians, because this is one river which is, I think, starts from Himalayas, goes right up to the Bay of Bengal. And there are so many major cities and villages and towns on the way. Now, River Ganga, I must say, is still less polluted than many other rivers. But uh, uh, in Calcutta, if you get up early in the morning and go to the ghats, I mean, it's amazing experience of that ancient India, the way we used to live like maybe 200 years or 800 years ago, going to the river, having a holy dip. It may not be a holy dip anymore, but nevertheless, it's very precious. So uh, going to the ghats every morning, whenever I've been to Calcutta is, has been my ritual and the faith people have. Somebody asked me, do you believe in God? I said, he must be there, but I have never met him. So they said, what is your faith? I said, my faith lies in the eyes of the people that I photograph. If they believe in something, how can I say it's not correct? And I have seen that in Mahakumela, and I see it on the riverfronts, and especially around Ganga, when thousands of people every morning turn up to take a holy dip, or whatever you may say, that they don't, don't have proper bathroom and water supply. So those who can live closer to the rivers, they come to Ma Ganga. And the rites and rituals they perform on, in everyday life are so precious. For me, this ancient traditions of India are more precious than the modern things which are going on and taking over the spirit of India. So for me, the riverfront has been very special. And in my book on Calcutta, at least one, if not half of it, 35% of it will be along the river. And then comes the evening and the spirit of Ganga, the, the way the people return to it and the evening, the soft light, the magic that begins to happen. The spirit of the people changes. When they come and sit on the ghats of Ganga, they are not the same people. So that transformation, transformation is very precious to record that after all, you know, this is what matters to them. Sir, thank you so much for that. You have brought, uh, you have brought about a very important point uh, regarding today's environment and how we treat it, of course. Um, along those lines, taking, in, taking into consideration the ghats in this particular case, what component, in your opinion, should a photograph have such that it can really move people and translate into something more than just a mere photograph? Yeah, precisely. It's the faith. And the magic of, you know, when they take a dip, the expression on, in their eyes, the way they stand around it, and their body language when they enter the waters, it's only the human expression that matters. Or, I mean, be it the, the, the purity and the spirituality of things or the madness of it, the rest is mediocrity. So, you know, when people get involved in doing things and especially with a religious or spiritual feeling, it gives you great 
moments. And then the birds and the animals that are found around that place. I've got a photograph where there are pigeons in the foreground. And then there are people, people, people in the water and a couple of pigeons flying. But if you look at the scale of the pigeons, pigeons are in the foreground and the people are little away and the scale of the people and the pigeon is the same, almost the same size. And a pigeon flying above them is a magical moment. So, you know, this cannot also, please remember that creativity cannot be explained in different situations. It's a matter, you see, the only thing is about creativity that you wait for a magical moment to happen. What is a magical moment? When you see something and you say, oh, that's a magical moment. What happened? So I think someone just unmuted. These are just certain uh, problems we have Somebody online. But that's fine. Me. You can you can please continue, sir. Sorry. Yeah. So you see, the problem is that human mind. Now this is the biggest storage house. This is the biggest computer of the world. God has been installing in all of us our head, our thinking, and we are full of all kinds of sights, sounds, ideas, information, images, and everything. And most, most of the time, most of us live like a programmed human machine. And that is the worst thing we are doing to ourselves. You know, re recently we've acquired a cat in the house, a little one. I tell you, anything moves in the house, her eyes go up. Anything new she sees, she jumps towards it. And I find she's so creative. She's so full of action that she's so refreshing that nothing stops her on the way. But human mind is full of this. And see, the problem is that you can store so much in it. But creativity happens beyond ideas. Ideas, once you've experienced something, then it becomes an idea. Oh, this is what I saw, what an idea. But the moment of experience and realization is far more powerful than the great ideas you have. And you can't take pictures with the great ideas because they're living in your head. And if they're not happening in the daily life, it's useless, isn't it? So, and But most of the time, most of us take pictures from the head. Whatever we've seen before, which is interesting, which is good. And we see similar situations, we say, yes, this is a picture. So the difference is that your eye should be connected to your heart and not to your head. Because your heart is you, the throbbing of your heart. Missing a heartbeat is you. And when you miss a heartbeat and you say, oh, these are the moments. But people, they are in a hurry and they keep on clicking pictures and with digital technology, 64 GB or 128 GB or whatever, you go crazy, colorful stuff, auto focus, auto exposure, no problem in life. How boring is that? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that is so beautiful. That is such a beautiful way to put it, of course. Um, you know, uh, what you said made me uh, think about how empathy with your subjects is, uh, is a great part of a photographer's, uh, in my opinion, a photographer's uh, profession, of course. Um, the next question uh, is, uh, that we have for you is in a national uh, geographic interview you once said that the photographer's art lies in portraying scenes and moments for their truth we have seen your works traveling all through india ranging from bhopal to your recent publication on amritsar a city of remembrance 
what is your take when it comes to the photographic interpretation of heritage sites, like the Ghats, in, as in today's discussion? Is it still a matter of portraying the truth when we are representing desolation? Well, <laughs> the truth, the life is happening everywhere. And when there is life, there are moments, there are magic moments, there, there are wasteful moments, there is intensity, there is no intensity, there's magic. The truth, even that is the truth, when there is no magic happening and you are bored and you are lying down on the guard. So, you know, there is no hard and fast rule about it. But even in those moments, how do you find your expression and your space? Now, two things are very important. One is the right moment, the right feeling that touches your heart. The second is in what kind of space you frame it to make it, to make that feeling more relevant. So this, this keeps happening everywhere. I have done, actually I have done three books on Calcutta already, though I live in Delhi. I can do another 10 books because it's ever challenging. It's ever changing. Calcutta is an amazing city. The next comes Bombay and then third is Delhi. No, next comes Varanasi, then comes Bombay, then comes Delhi. But as such, for me, the whole world is my canvas. And you see, when you are not programmed for certain ideas and situations, you know, sometimes people ask me, what were you thinking when you took this picture? I said, I have no brains. When I take pictures, I don't have any thinking. They come from the heart. So if your camera sensor, you remove the sensor and you put your heart behind the camera sensor, then anywhere in the world, wherever you look, you concentrate, you begin to experience, understand the magic happens, some kind of magic. It may not be hilarious. It may not be very dramatic. It can be a simple, honest, you know, they say a good picture is, a, is worth a thousand words. For me, it's such a boring thing because a thousand words can be a lot of noise. There are moments of silence and magic and rivers provide those kind of moments of silence and magic. See, the thing is people begin with the ideas. They don't begin with the passion of exploring the world. So if your journey is the, is upside down, then nobody can help you. Thank you, sir, for that. Um, we have a last question for you. You have covered Danny? various volatile, uh, you have covered various volatile issues, such as the Bhopal gas tragedy, uh, a tragedy, sure. Kashmir, Delhi protests and countless others. Was there a specific experience that was an eye opener for you? And you were glad to have been able to tell the story through your photographs? Not going anymore. No, you see, the important thing about any creative person is not going to a big event to an explosive situation or to a dramatic situation because those explosive and dramatic situations give you instanta instantaneously interesting dramatic pictures. So that is not something very important to me in this question. And that's why for me, the mundane daily life, which is to be lived by each one of us and most of the time, and yet we can't do without it. When you find some expressions within that ordinariness of daily life is where the magic lies. Because big events will give you dramatic pictures and quick pictures. But to find life in the lanes and by lanes of daily life 
is where magic happens. You see, then I think there is a story about Rabindranath Tagore that, you know, when he will, he will meet one of the guys that he admired a lot, he'll ask him, Kyo, have you seen God? And Rabindranath Tagore didn't know what to tell him. So one evening, you know, late evening, when he couldn't get sleep, he went to the riverfront and he saw the moon and he saw the reflection and he felt very beautiful. He thought this must be closer to him. And then it was drizzling, he was coming back. And then on the road, he saw a puddle of water and reflections of many things and the moon appears there. He says, amazing. So by the time he reaches home, he has to cross a little drain. And in that drain, he sees the moon. And the next day he goes to his guru with a great confidence. And he, the guru doesn't ask him the question because he knows that he's a realized man. So this is what the magic is all about. The realization is more important and the ability to connect with the most ordinary and to feel, to understand. And that's what matters. And here the context of water is see from <laughs> uh, Gurudev going to the riverfront on the, uh, on the path, he says, you know, water collected everywhere, drizzling everywhere and comes back and he crosses his own drain near his house and he sees the moon. So water is important. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Rai, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come to today's webinar, especially because you have not been keeping well. So we hope that you get better soon. And we, the students uh, of Modern High School for Girls, are thoroughly inspired by this discussion. And we hope to see you again in Calcutta and the uh, photos that you take over here. Yes, Your <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. And yeah. uh, inside an experience and as girl, a. <laughs> She's so sweet. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. All right, cheers. cheers. Thank you so much, sir. And it's an honor and a privilege for uh, for you to be here with us. And it's it's just that your inside and experience as an eminent uh, photographer has given us a lot to think about and explore this creative pursuit and perhaps for some to yes. actually consider. I haven't them. given a lot to think. I just told you to come back to your heart. That's all. And it's that means heart. a lot to us, okay. sir. Chalo, cheers. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so now we would like to move on to our next discussion uh, for the evening. Another indiv individual who has enthralled us with all of his works, Mr. Deboshi Dottu Gupto. Mr. Dottu Gupto is a former Kolkata High Court advocate and currently serves as the managing director at East India Pharmaceuticals India Limited. He also happens to be a passionate landscape and an extreme weather photographer and loves photographing clouds and storm systems. He's also a member of the Kolkata Cloud Chasers, the first storm chasing team in the country. Currently, he's the global ambassador for Fuji Films, representing India. So we're delighted to have you here with us and invite you to share your experience and insight, uh, insight regarding the world of photography. Thank you again, sir, for joining today. And we look forward to your pre presentation regarding the Ghats of uh, Calcutta. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Thank you lady, for uh, that introduction. I mean, uh, I, I, I think that uh, after Raghurai, sir, uh, I think that was something which shouldn't have come. I, mean, I know that uh, all of you got very limited time with him, but uh, uh, getting him uh, to a program like this, it's I think uh, it's an honor for everybody to be present. Those who are here, uh, consider yourselves to be very lucky and privileged that uh, we got to hear from him. And for us, uh, you know, he, he is our Guruji. That is what we call him all the time. And uh, I have had the privilege of meeting him uh, multiple times. Uh, 
you know, face to face. Normally, he's surrounded by hundreds of people, so hundreds of his fans. But uh, I remember the first time I saw him uh, face to face, he was standing right on the crossing of uh, Camac Street and Theatre Road standing with his camera nobody noticing him and i was there on the other side that too on my birthday i was coming back to my office from somewhere i don't remember but i saw him right on the other side of the street uh, i wanted to go and just give him a very tight hug forgot that it was traffic on the road and then uh, i could spend 5 minutes of his time he was here in calcutta for uh, his uh, inauguration of his exhibition it was unbelievable anyway so it's a it's a great uh, opportunity to see him and of course uh, we all wish him a very speedy recovery and uh, just coming out of fever so uh, i just hope that when he comes to kolkata uh, shukrit can uh, make an arrangement so that he can go and visit your school and the photography club and the students as well that would be amazing when he comes to kolkata because he loves this city he keeps on coming back i'm sure when uh, you know the covid situation is under control he will be definitely coming back so uh, as far as uh, my photography uh, journey is concerned uh, yes i am mainly into uh, you know storms and uh, cloud formations and uh, i know that uh, you know being a lawyer and somebody who's into the pharma industry and into the photography that makes a hell a lot of mess as far as combination is concerned but uh, i don't know this somehow happened that uh, you know these things have come into my life and made a lot of difference in what what i do and as far especially as far as the ghats are concerned uh, as raghuraj ji said that uh, so much of activity you know i am a landscape photographer so i normally stay away from a uh, scenes which has people in it but my love for the river is something which has only people in it so it's something a little bit of contradictory choice of subjects but uh, you know uh, what what happens especially in kolkata i think uh, i've been to lot of uh, places where through which the ganges passes i am doing a very big series uh, i think a dream series of my life where i'm capturing uh, congregation along the uh, route of the ganges from gomukh to ganga sagar it will take a long time uh, covid has actually delayed it for two years now but uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, environment you see in calcutta you know because the 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 span of hugli in calcutta spans from you say central kolkata to north okay now those who have visited say uh, the princeep ghat area or the jajes ghat area you know you can find out that there are uh, mainly uh, people who come for leisure in that those areas so the ghats which are closer to south kolkata they are mostly uh, mostly you know uh, i won't say it's a tourist attraction but uh, we normally go there for leisure now as you as you walk along hugli towards say the central part of kolkata and towards, towards the north you know the, the the nature of people actually visiting the ghats you know it is different now when you go to central calcutta it's most mostly people um, uh, in the business area they are running you know to take the launch to the other side to the howrah station side or uh, you know passing along the way and when you go to north uh, i think that the entire scene changes because it's almost part of their homes so people go in there to bathe they 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 sit there and do a little bit of gap shop a lot of people you know i've seen students studying there uh, somebody with the guitar playing music there so, so the entire length of hugli in calcutta changes from area to area and that is actually fascinating for me i mean the actually the nature the, the way the people behave it also changes from south to north so i am sure that whenever you get time and whenever uh, you are allowed to go out of course uh, i would always uh, suggest after getting vaccinated when the vaccine comes and when it is allowed you will definitely go and visit the ghats and uh, find out yourself the the charm of the ghats in uh, in kolkata and of course uh, raghuraj ji was talking about banaras an uh, amazing place to shoot the ganges there i think it's an absolutely heavenly place for photographers but of of course kolkata as a city is of course very special amazing city to photograph and i'm sure that you love the ghats when you go and photograph those places again and again so i'll just uh, share my screen and uh, show you a few photos where you can uh, see what i capture of course there's lot of you know so, uh, you know sky colors and clouds in that because i am a extreme weather and cloud photographer so 
but i have uh, you know my photography with ghats and my love uh, with the ghat is now a, a mixed bag of emotions for me so it will have people it will have a little bit of nature clouds in those pictures and i have uh, you know shortlisted a few images in the limited time you know, that i have been privileged to be given this time so that you can have an idea about what i capture and uh, how i do it so just uh, share the screen and start uh, presenting uh, those images okay Okay. Um, I hope you can see the screen now. Can you see the screen? And the first. Yes, we can. Right? Okay. Okay. So I'll just move on uh, to the first uh, images. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is what I was actually talking about. It it it's basically organized chaos in the ghats during maybe say in the evening. Okay. Uh, Raghuji was talking about pigeons. I have not been very lucky to. capture pigeons in that way but these are crows there and in, in place of pigeons but uh, yeah, this is uh, judges ghat uh, mostly near near to the beginning of the kolkata ghats uh, amazing thing which i have found i have been photographing the ghats for a long time the ghats have become much cleaner much much cleaner um, in the last few years uh, it actually depends upon the activity of the uh, corporations the the other authorities those are in charge of maintaining ghats and the people at large i have found that people to be more responsible now not uh, littering the ghats in a big way so that is something which i love and appreciate uh, with people visiting the ghats that they now have uh, i think a lot of responsibility to make sure that we preserve uh, the river again as raghuraj ji was saying a lot of pollutants in the river but again it's up to us it's only us we can do it i mean you know we are the best persons to make sure that uh, the ghats are preserved and i think photography is a fantastic medium to do it it's a very powerful medium actually to uh, raise awareness uh, among uh, the citizens and the visitors of the city to make sure that these ghats are uh, you know kept spick and span and uh, according to the the laws of uh, of the state so uh, this actually happens to be a, a very favorite image of mine taken with a very wide angle lens as this uh, is uh, all the viewers are from the photography club uh, it was a very wide very very wide lens uh, it's actually a fisheye lens but i have corrected the uh, lens profiles on photoshop to make sure that you know it's not uh, a fisheye uh, point of view on this image so uh, it was one of my favorite places to go uh, majority of the time i do it Shoot a lot when I come back from office. Uh, you know, this is excluding the last one and a half years. I mean, I have not shot in this area for almost a year now. But uh, I would love to go back and uh, you know sit there quietly and uh, reflect upon the challenging times that we have faced for one and a half years. But I mean, something which I love, I love the um, sunset colors, reflections of the clouds on the water. uh the, the the spread of the crows in in the frame uh, uh i mean amazing is something which i have always loved to do okay so okay this this was actually taken uh, last week in fact uh, last week this was uh, in a place called kumotuli i hope uh, you have heard about kumotuli where that's the uh, potter's area where the pratimas are made for pujas durga puja now of course kali puja uh, uh, pratimas are made ganesh puja pratimas a fantastic part of calcutta so much of activity in that area and it is along the river from where actually the um, the the silt comes uh, with which the idols are made so again a very important uh, and my favorite one of my favorite places to shoot so these are ghats along uh, the komotuli area uh, of course restored uh with this kind of uh, red tiles and uh, it's it's taken care of i mean uh, the locals here are very very uh, protective of uh, this this part of the ghats if you if you are seen littering uh, they will catch you and they will tell you not to do it and we i have also told a lot of people there you know not to litter those maybe few visitors not aware with what kind of cleanliness it is maintained there but amazing part of uh, now uh, you know the ghats gives you a lot of uh, scope to uh, experience emotions okay now as you can see this uh, the subject in the center 
he's wearing all white so uh, i presume that there has been some mishap in this in his family and um, of course uh, you know he was a very very lone quiet person there on that day uh, so i think you know the, the ghats gives you a lot of uh, different uh, emotions that you can experience there you know there's there's joy there's sadness uh, there's drama sometimes in the sky uh, in pouring rain it's absolutely unbelievable in the, if you stand in the ghats in pouring rain uh, it's it's a fantastic feeling so uh, you know i chose this image to show a different kind of emotion in one of the subjects okay okay uh, lovely colors uh, this is something which i love uh, as an extreme weather and cloud photographer i love uh, sunset colors and uh, calcutta is one of the few places along uh, the the ganges or the hugli where you can get uh, unbelievable sky colors uh, during peak season and this season i i think we didn't have that much of amazing red tones in the sky but uh, this was 5 6 years back uh this this is the baje kadam tala ghat this is one of the main uh, ghats for uh, immersion just uh, behind uh, eden gardens so another amazing place to uh, shoot uh, sunsets and uh, you know during the monsoons and the peak cloud season which is around uh, july august september and a little bit of october the the angle of the sun uh, and and the sunset is unbelievable so uh, it's something which i loved uh, i love wide angle lenses i love a lot of colors so uh, this is something uh, one of my favorite images on the ghats and i thought that i would again share this with you again a lot of people in the ghat doing a lot of activities uh, a lot of uh, you know these there are a lot of long distance buses that uh, start from uh, very near to this ghat just adjacent to this ghat so there are people from uh, a lot of different states you can find uh, speaking in a lot of different languages Uh, mainly from bordering states uh, orissa jharkhand uh, an amazing time in the evening where a lot of people are there uh, again right now considering the situation with covid it might not be a very good idea to go in crowded places but you know these are images taken uh, a few years back okay, okay now uh, we have always talked about ghats along the kolkata side right so but the ghats on the other side they are equally uh, interesting uh, this is shipur right opposite to uh, you know uh, the other side of the second hugli bridge so shipur ghat and other ghats along the way they are very very interesting uh, i remember uh, there is uh, you know you know the you are i think few of you are aware of the, uh, the fantastic arati that goes in varanasi right have any of you been to varanasi and have you one of you seen those uh, artis in uh, the sashwant shamed ghat in varanasi it's absolutely stunning and they have uh, yes ganga arti right prantik so they have uh, not in that scale but similar kind of arti in a ghat which is called ramkrishnapur ghat it's on the left of this ghat uh, it's amazing i mean it's fantastic i have seen uh, that arti once and it's beautiful i am sure that it's not happening right now but i'm sure that with things becoming a little bit better um, uh, as far as covid is concerned they will start again you can have a look it starts at around 6 o'clock in the evening um, every day i think it happens every day so uh, this is on the other side again a lot of most of the kids playing <laughs> along the river uh, i was almost uh, knee deep in in water on that day but um, you know the other side they're quite quite interesting I'll go to another one uh, you can see this is again coming back to baji kadam tala ghat and again uh, we had a fantastic uh, storm over calcutta during that day i remember that day very very uh, clearly we had an amazing uh, gorgeous looking storm uh, some of you might think that i've gone crazy as turbine storms as gorgeous i know they, those are powerful weather phenomena very destructive uh, very dangerous but uh, it gives uh, you know you know rise to amazing light uh, storm systems so uh, oh, this is another another uh, photo from uh, kadam tala ghat you can see the storm at the end of uh, the frame and you can see a lot of rain coming down right you know the things falling right on the in the frame i can i hope you can see that 
so again uh, again a lone uh, gent- you know elderly person uh, he was trying standing there uh, trying to find out coins that people live and uh, leave on the mud after doing uh, a lot of rituals uh, along the river so there are other kids also they have these kind of magnets they throw in the water to get uh, back those coins but he was a lone gentleman very elderly uh, trying to find out coins on that day so you know Uh, it created a very mellow tone in the sky and you know the dark clouds and this gentleman alone uh, I, i felt a little bit sad uh, for him actually for, for what he was doing okay uh, this is going back to the other side again so i'm just uh, you know crossing the river from <laughs> from the one end to the other this is rangkrishnapul ghat uh, this is also a beautiful uh, renovated part of howra it's a very very interesting part Uh, the river along howrah is equally interesting i know that many of us who who live in calcutta we normally do not go and visit the ghats uh, on the other side but uh, if you can you can do it i find it equally interesting and it has a little bit of different character um, you know although it's just on the other side of the river but you know people there um, amazing very friendly uh, i'm not saying people on the calcutta side are not friendly but uh, people on this side they are extremely friendly they'll come and talk to you and you know find out what you want to do what you like to do very nice place to go and visit okay uh, coming back again to to the kolkata side uh, bagwazar ghat a very very interesting uh, place uh, this launch jetty is very very busy uh, you know very frequent launches uh, they go from this side to the howrah bridge side and in the evening you will see a lot of office commuters taking uh, lawn services to go to the other side of the river as they go back home uh, after a day in the office and again uh, there are uh, you know the local kids they keep on jumping from uh, those uh, uh, those launches you know you see a, a person who is there uh, i don't know whether you can see that as here this person okay so he is supposed he actually jumped from that you know from here to somewhere here but you know they have been doing it for a long time it's dangerous but they keep on doing this uh, from time to time um, a lot of activity again uh, a different kind of activity uh, in this frame where uh, we have one of the commuters and that boy on the top of the steamer so uh, go back to the next one okay uh, children playing along the ghats uh, another very very common sight when you visit the north calcutta ghats you can't get this you know if you come towards the south you won't see this but uh, you won't you'll see a lot of this when you are in north calcutta ghat so uh, you can visit uh, these parts uh, you know and again you see the the ghat steps are very clean this is something which i wanted to highlight in this presentation that uh, you know things have changed i mean things have i think changed for the better they take care of these ghats and i think when the, the kind of uh, awareness comes to people i think that is best for everybody so i'm good that you know, there is a lot of awareness between the lo- in, in in the locals uh, who live and use the ghats for their everyday uh, chores uh, on on this area so it's it's good that the locals are aware now okay uh, my ghat uh, you know my as in sharoda ma uh, her house is just next to this ghat this is on the right side of uh, bag bazar ghat again a uh, very very interesting place to uh, compose images and as you know as photographers we are supposed to tell stories uh, you know maybe as raghurai ji said not a thousand word story but a single story uh, sometimes is much much powerful than a story that you know says a thousand words so and a very very interesting area to shoot again very clean very very clean You know, they wash these steps every evening every evening so it's something uh, which is amazing to see it's it's good the kind of awareness is very very good okay this is kashi mitra ghat uh, and the person who is standing on those bamboo poles he is actually fishing right there so um, so this i mean the river side gives you amazing frames to uh, shoot you never know what you get you never know i mean somewhere It, it is a place where you just cannot plan a frame or plan a shoot. You come there, you know, get uh, you know drenched in those emotions and what is happening in that area, and then you start clicking your images. 
I mean, it is so fascinating that you know uh, having a preconceived idea and coming uh, there to shoot. Actually, I can't do it. I've always had a lot of aspirations that I'll do this or that when I come to the guts. But whenever I land and you know start looking at what is happening, I fully get immersed in those emotions and I actually forget all all the rules. You know, you forget everything. But if you have pre-planned your visit, you'll forget everything. But I think that's the uh, fun of it. I mean, and the thrill of it, that you know, you take what is there at the moment and you keep shooting. Okay, so a lot of activities. I've I've I've, I've uh, selected images where there are a lot of activities along the guts. So these are, of course, you know, this is the lifeline of the city uh, on both sides. You know, two cities. Uh, absolutely important part of both the cities so you'll get a lot of interesting frames and if you walk along this part there's a a strand a road along uh, along the river uh, you know if you can in the future i hope you will as part of the club uh, take a photo by shukrit can actually help because he's done that many times when you can start a, a walk from princep ghat and end in mayar ghat i mean that's a long long area but you know, it, it covers a fantastic band of emotions from one place to the end. It, it's actually amazing. Uh, I've done partly that twice or thrice, but I couldn't make the entire stretch. Uh, okay, uh, even if we do not see, the, there are a lot of fishermen uh, who uh, depends on the river, even in, in a city like Kolkata. So uh, this is right on Jajas Ghat. Uh, they were selling uh, their catch uh, during the evening. Uh, so you know, it's it's not only a, a photographer's paradise, but it supports uh, so much, so many livelihoods. Uh, the river. So you will get to see these also when when you visit the ghats. Okay, again, a uh, lot of different color. Uh, you know, if you go to the ghats in the morning, you will get a different tone of color. In the evening, it is absolutely different. Uh, fantastic, uh, you know, magenta, violet, yellow tones. Uh, it's it's absolutely a photographer's dream. Uh, the ghats along along the river. Again, very clean indeed. Very very clean. You won't find a single litter. Okay, now this is I think one of the most interesting places in the city of Kolkata. I hope few of you have gone there. This is the one of Asia's largest wholesale flower market that is right beneath the Howra Bridge. So it is absolutely a fantastic place to visit. Uh, you know, during the winter, you get a beautiful uh, light mist fog uh, to photograph. Uh, during summers, very bright light coming from the east. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, if you just stand there, uh, you you admire the bridge. You admire what the people the people are doing. Of of course, one of the fewer ghats that uh, they do try to keep it clean, but uh, you know, not not that. You know. Yeah, or no. Uh, when you get into uh, the groove, you don't get the smell. I mean, when you are you know, as a photographer, sometimes you get into a zone. Right, you you get it's almost like uh, you get hypnotized by what is happening in front of you, and then you have to uh, find out and block out the smell, and then you can enjoy a fantastic frame and uh, you know capture it, and you can share it with others. Of course, the smell will be there uh, because there are a lot of leaves and flowers involved, uh, apart from other things as well. So the smell, uh, you know, you should make it a part of your experience. Of course, you can't change everything, whatever you like. But anyway, there's another part of Calcutta which I love. The flower market is absolutely unbelievably beautiful. The kind of colors you get to see uh, in the morning. Uh, I hope all of you can make it after uh, you know India you know, you know, and Calcutta as a city improves uh, with the COVID situation. Okay, uh, Ahiri Tola is another ghat on in, in North Calcutta. You know, Children playing. I love this frame because you know they were absolutely in their own world. They forgot that there was a camera right in front of them. Of course, my camera was a smaller one, not the bigger DSLRs. Uh, but uh, you know they were absolutely in their own world. Uh, 
they didn't even see me i was right in front of them so another beautiful ghat a very clean and a lot of activities with the locals a very nice place to go okay um, immersion uh, yes i know it's a, a very tricky topic nowadays with the river pollution and everything but uh, you know i think the corporation is doing their bit to make sure that uh, you know these idols are taken out immediately after their mercy but i think it's a unbelievably uh, you know interesting uh, congregation uh, immersions so i am doing a series on immersions also i would love to take it forward and share with you when it you know when it is done fully so this is in komotu again okay some more colors in the evening again uh, of course i don't know these two persons they were like busy chatting pointing out something i just happened to be there at that at that time i was uh, capturing the sunset huh. okay okay another one is almost at the end of uh, my presentation again uh, storm and he was like chanting and praying so again different range of emotions uh, this is near bahu ghat uh, local commuters in the sunset okay another one i'll just browse through it so that you can see some different frames of uh, of the ghats okay this is uh, during uh, durga puja tarpon in the morning during mohalaya uh, in the morning of mohalaya okay uh, another immersion and you see the people going round and round uh, the makali before the immersion Okay, uh, this is the last one uh, in the presentation. Fairly place, beautiful place to go. They have a good, beautiful garden there, uh, which you can go. It's a free entry, and photography is allowed there. Okay, that's it. Uh, these are my uh, contact names and uh, handles, and uh, whatever I know. Uh, if you are allowed uh, to use uh, Instagram and Facebook, then only please. Uh, you can get in touch with me through these handles. Otherwise, th that is my email address. You can always email me in whatever you want to know. Uh, so you can see few of my images there. Uh, rivers of Bengal uh, dot in is the project that covers my rivers, and uh, I have a lot of images on Instagram as well. But please, uh, you know, take the permission of your parents or teachers. in case you have to get into instagram to see my images okay so thank you so much uh, modern high school uh, thank you so much teachers thank you so much shukrit for uh, giving me this opportunity it was a real pleasure thank you so much thank you so much sir for taking us through your journey along the rivers of bengal it was inspiring to watch the lives of these rivers through your lenses and we our students have a number of questions to ask you so we uh, with your permission maybe move on to the discussion se uh, segment of the yeah sure sure absolutely go ahead thank you so much sir uh, so you have extensively covered the rivers of bengal and someone who has dealt a lot with techno uh, technical knowledge and skill uh, uh, while taking those photographs i would like to ask you that there are a lot of people without any professional equipments or training and can and can and can now capture visuals without uh, with the use of uh, smartphones mirrorless uh, pocket cameras gopros and what is lost in skill uh, is compensated in anything so what do you think the degree of skill is still remains in the art of photography as a whole well i think uh... You know, editing will only help you if you have the uh, original image properly okay so you just cannot you know you can actually you can bring in subjects through editing but that's a different area uh, altogether uh, i do not call that photography that is more of a photo art of course there's no harm in doing it but altering a photograph or a scene which is originally something and making it something else without letting uh, know the viewers is something which i do not follow but originally you need to have skills in order to get a good photo photograph in the first place for example you have to have a very strong composition 
So, uh, you know, you just cannot do it in uh, Photoshop like this. It's a tough thing to do. You can, but again, coming back to my earlier thing that uh, we should not actually being, being photographers. Uh, I think we have responsibilities to tell uh, a story in a proper way. So you require skills, you require a lot of skills, but of course, uh, you know, you, you should not hurry into this. Your skills develop uh, with time and practice. So even if you have, um, for example, I'll just find out something. Even if you have a camera like this, okay. Uh, it's a professional uh, medium format camera or uh, something like this, it's a smaller one, or my mobile. And if you have lenses like this on the mobile, you can have anything, but uh, if you want to tell a story and if you have necessary skills, the medium uh, of, of the gear is unimportant at this point because mind you, the mobile phones nowadays, they are extremely powerful, extremely powerful, all mobile phones. And even if you go a little bit further, I mean, our, our almighty, the creator has given us the best cameras in our eyes and in our brain. So you don't even need a you know photographic device to have it in you so uh, you know it's it's not always that you need to share your work and get like millions of likes it's, it's always not important what is important is as a photographer you should be happy with the images that you create that is, that is i think comes number one and you develop skills i mean that is the fun of it it's an art form and uh, even with extreme amount of good gears and uh, cameras and the mobile phones, GoPros. Uh, you know, if you take my case, I mess up 90% of the time. 90% of my images are images which I don't like. And then only 10% are frames which I like. So, of course, the gear is important. I'm not saying the gear is not important. But your individual skills uh, make a lot of difference in the end frame. Okay. A story well told a story well composed, a story well exposed as far as your exposure settings are concerned and a story nowadays very well edited properly. So that it's an entire package. So you definitely require skill. Without that skill, uh, even if you have the world's most expensive camera, you won't be able to tell a good story. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so like the uh, whole world of photography has evolved a lot. And as budding photographers, how does how do one how does one delve into experimenting with those expensive equipments and establish oneself in in a career in this field and also follow the ethics of being a photographer? At, see, see, as far as the the value of those cameras are concerned, you know, I, that is what I was telling previously. You know, even if you have the best camera in the world, it will not shoot the image for you know in itself because it's just a machine and you've got to tell the machine what to do okay so the real image making takes place inside your brain and your heart okay so that is where the real image takes place now of course you are actually you know telling the camera by settings and by putting it in front of you and composing the images in what you want to do with, you know or what the kind of story you want to tell so that actually makes the image and that records the image so uh, no, even if you have to do it professionally, so it's much uh, more of a pressure because it's you will be earning money. You will be providing your clients with kind of images that they like. If you're a photojournalist, you have got to provide images which makes the news or uh, tells the proper proper story. Uh, for example, uh, for I am not a professional photographer, but a professional landscape photographer is supposed to capture good frames that are works of art to be hung in, in walls of their, their customers. So uh, I think th that will be important. I mean, of course, all of you will be, fan you know, you are fantastic photographers. You will be even better photographers in the future. Uh, you will be, uh, whatever, you know, you will be getting your dream cameras. Uh, I have my dream cameras. And when I was uh, in, in school and in college, I used to dream about a lot of you know, having bigger cameras, bigger lenses. It looks very cool, right? You know, it looks fantastic. Having bigger cameras, uh, there's nothing wrong in it. Uh, it's everybody's dream. You also dream uh, in that way. I hope sure that uh, you'll become fantastic professionals in the future. Uh, those are who will be going to professional uh, photography. 
they will be getting those gears those who are will be into amateur photography but in other professions you will be able, able to earn and afford that kind of uh, gears uh, in the future but of course again that camera itself will not do anything for you so it is actually you you have to do it and of course you have to have uh, you know a set of ethics that you will follow uh, i have my set of ethics which i you know guard those ethics very dearly when i am uh, on the street or when i'm shooting uh, my storms and uh, you know the cloud systems uh, for example uh, you know i am very uh, i i do not i'm not very comfortable with shooting people uh, right in front of course these pictures where i was very close to the people but normally as an extreme weather photographer you can well imagine that uh, wherever i go to shoot storms there are actually people running the other way okay so, so the people run away from you know the scene where i go to capture storms but i have uh, a, a set of ethics where i do not uh normally shoot uh, you know portraits of people without asking or uh, you know share their images without asking uh, in many of the frames that you have seen those who are very close to uh, my frames i had spoken to them i made them comfortable i told them that you know i will be keeping these images for me and i will be having it on the website but uh, of course it's not always possible you can't go and ask permissions from everybody so most of my frames uh, with with clouds and the ghats i keep it in a silhouette mode so that you cannot recognize the people but again that you can't do it in a, with 100% perfection all the time but anyway you need to have your own set of ethics and you need to learn uh, the the tricks of this trade this art form it goes for any art form or anything you got to practice hard look at because now with internet we have images or the informations at our fingertips right i mean the platforms like uh, youtube i mean a lot of uh, you know, tutorials there uh, like with with modern technology for what is happening today we we got to hear from raghuraj sir fantastic words from him so you know you have a lot of options that you can look at works of others those you like and then you have your own way of interpreting the images okay now it is it is nothing wrong trying to replicate others there is nothing wrong we have all done that when we started and uh, we always, i have done that i have always tried to replicate the photographers which i love but then i found out at one point of time that you know while doing so and you have a you know open mind then you will get your style of photography and i think something that is fantastic but it will take time it doesn't happen in a year it will take a long time and then once suddenly you'll see that you've found out uh, a comfort zone or a kind of uh, frame that you, you love to create on your own and you will have a specialty on that so you need to work on that uh, you know you know but you should enjoy i mean there's no pressure that you know you have to have you know photos which has like 1000 likes you know sometimes we feel bad like when it has zero likes nobody is liking our images but what what is important is whether you are liking it or not that one like which you give it to yourself is is the most important like of the of course you would love to get appreciation and we love that when people like our images our viewers we love that fact but at the end of the day it's it's your creation and you should like it first so that kind of skill sets you need to have and uh, i'm sure that with practice it's bound to get better and better Uh, thank you so much sir for your words of wisdom you. and i think our audience they must be having a lot of questions to ask so with your permission maybe open the forum to the audience so they can ask their questions yes of course definitely thank definitely. you sir joining over to you so if you have any questions please please feel free to uh, post them on the chat or just say it uh, unmute and say it um if uh okay so we have one question in the chat already photography is not an exact science by nature is photography contextual clicked and reimagined or idealistic imagined and then created uh well uh, kumudini i think it's a combination of both okay, and uh, it's a combination of both and it it depends upon the genres okay and there, there are very different different genres of photography where uh, you know in 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 many many 
for example uh, if you talk about say uh, product of fashion photography okay the entire concept is thought of in the in the in the beginning you have stylists you have people thinking about the theme of of the shoot then you set up the shoot and then you you plan it you plan and then you execute the shoot okay but you know there are other genres for example take street absolutely unplanned right it's an un unplanned canvas where a lot of things are happening which is actually unplanned you cannot direct people to do this or that you know it's happening naturally and you are just shooting the way it is uh, same thing with, with the with the photography that i do uh, it's a mixture of both for example when i shoot uh, storms and uh, cloudscapes mainly with storms uh, we have uh, a very robust system of tracking storms so that part of the process is planned it's fully planned okay we know where the storms are coming where the storm is going uh, what kind of clouds it is formed you can get it from apps it's a different app it's another thing uh, entirely different thing and then when you reach uh, the location where you are in the place to execute or photograph those storms or intercept those storms that part is after that is absolutely unpredictable you do not know what the storm is going to do right in front of you maybe it's lightning maybe it's a lot of heavy rain maybe the storm goes somewhere else so i think it's a mixture of both and again a genre dependent there are there are a lot of instances where it is fully planned there are a lot of instances where there you cannot plan a single second of that shoot but i mean that's the fun of it i mean i hope this answers your question thank you for that um the next question is what is the difference between uh, between photography and videography to the person behind the camera in their ways of visual storytelling uh i think see, i am very very bad at videos okay uh, we, you know but i think the basics are the same basic because both of both photography and videography if you if you take the it, it works with only one medium right that is light so i mean the light is common you got to know the nature of good light and then i think the two different ways of telling one story you know, motion pictures or is is a different way of telling stories still photographs are uh, a different way of telling stories you're freezing time in both both uh, aspects but both genres but uh, i do not think there's a huge amount of difference in photography and and videography as far as the basics are concerned the basics are absolutely the same the light will be same for everything but there are few few areas which are different i mean the frame rates shutters are different in videos and stills a little bit of different but with videos i don't think i won't going to help you won't be able to help you a lot because I'm very bad at videos i you know i do have my blogs but you know those are only very amateurish blogs it's a different era. i i am trying to learn a lot of editing with videos and storytelling through videos that's a very tough tough place and i would rather stick to my skills i mean it's better for me one skill takes so much time to i you know acquire it's by the time you do one the other just skips away so anyway uh moving we have questions flooding in at this moment so uh, the next question is uh, as a photographer what are certain editing skills that you would suggest to make presentation of photographs better and is the art of photography a skill to be shaped for self expression or for the masses despite the photographer's own style okay uh, i will take the later part of the question latter part of the question first uh, again it you know it, it depends upon individuals right how you look at it so uh, you know it's a, i know it's a very general question but again you know it it depends upon how you want to portray uh, the art form and again there are a lot of genres and lot of areas where it is portrayed in a different way i know it's a very you know very big general question i don't think i am in a position oh, i got to learn a lot to answer that part of the question but the first part of the question uh editing skills of course it is required and if you go back to the original uh, film photographs uh, i do not know whether you have handled film before film used to be developed in a lab okay in a dark room okay now the same thing you do with an image in photoshop or lightroom okay in the computer the processes are almost the same there you used to have chemicals 
and it was, it was a specific process laid down in the guidebooks and with editing in computer also it is same and equally important and i i would i would say that you know if you if you are creating one frame 50% is shooting that frame with the with the kind of composition good exposure and the other 50% is editing it is that important it's almost 50 50 nowadays very very important you need to have good editing skills do, i mean do not do do not do not over edit over editing is not right but i would suggest that at some point of time you should over edit your images otherwise you won't know where to draw the line okay i have done pathetic editing uh, in many of my images i have just gone back after doing i have over saturated my images i have made the sky even you know more darker blue sometimes but uh, you need to do a, have a good editing skill but it will again take time the more you uh, you know uh, explore the editing software which you are using i spoke about photoshop there are a lot of other uh, softwares as well even the, in your phone uh, i don't know whether you can use snapseed uh, it's a fantastic editing software you know it has so much of controls uh, even even a, a small uh, you know in your instagram app you can also have a little bit of uh, editing but uh, the more you get into better uh, storytelling uh, i think you should move into better editing software and it takes time but it is very important it is very important as important as creating the image of course uh, as rahul sir says um, photographs capture the truth of the moment um, and editing just enhances the photograph into more of the moment i so, guess i mean actually uh, you know in all digital cameras the photos that you see uh on your phone and the back of a digital camera screen it's actually edited it goes through a software and then you can see that image so it's already edited you know even before you know it so that's the truth i mean you you will find out people saying oh you edit images no that's not right uh, that's not the true representation of that frame no it's absolutely wrong I mean, it's always edited but don't over edit uh, you know or don't manipulate or uh, i should say so editing though it's always there it's, it's natural in the video camera itself it goes through a software before which you can't see the image so it's it's there i mean in landscape photography how much editing play how much does editing play a role well again uh, you know it depends if whether you want to over edit you can do it but of course in landscape uh, there are a little bit of uh, different uh, you know tips and tricks that you can uh, we as landscape photographers we use a lot of filters which we fix in front of uh, the camera okay uh, we call it the neutral density filter is there the big stopper is there graduated neutral density is there so that you can balance the light on the sky and the foreground accordingly so the the the, the image is balanced or it's not edited though it's balanced even before it hits the sensor and then you can start editing but uh, you know you need a lot of editing of course editing you have to do and properly in landscapes mainly you know if you do not do a proper editing that uh, frame looks absolutely un, you know uh, artificial it doesn't make any sense to me so but you need um, a good amount of editing but not over editing but again it's to balance the frame as you saw it you know i i try to edit uh, my images and you know try to match it as i saw the frame so i shoot raw and jpeg together because the jpeg technically has uh, you know a, a better representation of what it was in that frame as you know the raw file has the raw data of the uh, of the actual image captured it's almost a flatter file form but it has a lot of uh, information inside so i try to match that raw file with the jpeg which i shoot together so i shoot raw plus jpeg uh, normally thank you for that insight um the next question from mushri is uh, your photographs revolve around this theme of nature conservation could you give us an insight into what this really means and how as amateur photographers we can go into that direction how is the art of are driven towards creating social awareness and change okay uh, that's a very good question actually i mean all the questions are were fantastic but this is also a very very important thing that 
I personally try to do, uh, but it's not that I've always thought about that in the beginning. Uh, this this thought uh, came, uh, of course, many years back, but when I was thinking that uh, what can I do with uh, the photographs I, I create or the kind of experiences that I'm getting. And uh, as you know, uh, you heard that in the intro that uh, our team, the Kolkata Cloud Chasers, uh, you know, we have decided to make people aware with a lot of uh, environment protection, of course, uh, make people aware about climate change through our pictures, uh, a lot of lightning safety. We do a lot of workshops uh, with lightning safety uh, with a lot of schools and colleges. I've told Shukri that when things uh, turn okay and uh, to all your teachers, we would definitely love to come and present uh, about lightning safety and extreme weather. So, but, you know, coming back to the question, uh, yes, nature conservation, uh, I'm trying to do my bit. I'm trying to show people that uh, this is what is existent now. And if you don't take care of nature, you won't see this or you won't be, we won't be leaving anything to my future, you know, the coming generation. My son is six years old. So I've got to leave something for him so that he enjoys uh, nature. If you are not leaving anything for the coming generation, then I think we are doing a very bad job as uh, uh, you know, current human beings. Okay? We have a lot of power, by the way. So we need to be very, very aware of uh, you know, what kind of message we, want, we would love to give out. And especially with Rivers of Bengal, it was something like that to you know, present, to keep on you know, spreading the message of conservation of the rivers. Um, especially with my cloud images or storms, that is what I keep on telling people that, you know, storms are getting violent every year and uh, the environment or the climate shift has got a lot uh, to do with that. So if you do not want to see these kind of events, so make sure that we follow the right path to, uh, you know, make things better. There's still time, there's still time, but uh, I don't know what's the tipping point of, of the point of no return. But I just, I'm always an optimist. There's still time that, uh, you know, and as a photographer, we have the best medium to spread the message. All of you, all of you can make a lot of difference by, by uh, you know, showing something which you think uh, should be preserved in a better way or showing something which you think which is not right and which has to be corrected. So uh, all of you are very powerful. You have um, such a powerful medium that you love and as part of a photography club, you are part of your school's photography club. So it's, it's very clear that you love the art form. But when you use it for a, a purpose other than, you know, something which, you know, makes you happy, but, you know, creates a different difference in your viewers uh, and creates an opinion in your viewers of what is right or what is wrong. I think that has to be, uh, you know, executed at some point of time. So I'm sure that you will be doing this. And um, you will be, you know, portraying the right message as far as uh, climate conservation is concerned. We re definitely require a lot of photographers uh, getting into climate conservation or spreading the message of climate conservation. So I, um, all the best to all of you. Please do that. You know, we require you know, good photographers telling the right thing. So I think questions are still flooding the chat box, but I don't think we have any more time. Yeah. Um, okay, those who want, uh, please write to me and I'll answer your questions through email or whatever, Instagram chat, if you're allowed to use Instagram. Okay, or any social media. Please take your parents' permission or your school's permission. I mean, I'm very, very particular about this, the way you, you use social media. Please take your permission of your parents or your teachers. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. I think it's very generous of you to actually answer the question even after the seminar. And I think we have given you some tough question and you have tackled it like a pro. So thank you so much for giving, giving us your insight and your words of wisdom. And so now we would like to invite on screen Dr. Sara Ahmed, the Director of Living Waters Museum to kindly give a formal vote of thanks. Okay. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, it's been a long and enthralling evening with two wonderful uh, speakers and all the beautiful images that we've seen. 
So I want to thank the girls of the Modern High School again for doing such a professional job. I mean, you, you, got, you girls are fantastic. I can't say you guys are fantastic. <laughs> so we normally say. Um, Ragurai, of course, has been an inspiration for all of us when I did my PhD in Varanasi in the late 80s on the cleaning of the Ganga. His book, uh, I think I have two of his books actually, were really, really inspiring for, for me. And uh, what we've heard from you, um, Debushish is, um, sorry, I'm going to pronounce the name wrong. Debushi. Debushi, okay. <laughs> uh, just um, very, very practical um, tips as well, I think, on issues of consent, on ethics, on uh, working with extreme events, climate change, water, whose kind of issues are very important to the work that we at Lib Living Waters Museum do in terms of working with young people to visualize the stories around water heritage, built, cultural, natural. I think it would be great once things are, have eased up a bit in Calcutta, if you can do some of these uh, hands-on workshops or the walks with uh, the students, uh, particularly around the exhibition that Sukrit you're planning in December. Maybe nice to think of an event of that sort around that. Um, I mean, for, for me personally, when you go sightseeing and nowadays, no one's actually looking at a thing. Everyone is looking at things through the lens of their cell phone, basically. At the India Art Festival in Delhi, um, I think when I was visiting the Pantheon in, in, in Italy, everywhere, it's just that cell phone and the camera. And sometimes I think it can be overwhelmingly irritating that people are not enjoying the beauty of the site but just clicking, as you were saying earlier, you know, hundreds of pictures and, and just wanting to capture the moment, but not emotionally connect with that. So here's you know, an extreme of that. And I think what you also said about how we picture what we picture, and there were some very interesting questions coming to, to you about, you know, what is the responsibility of a photographer when he or she sees agony and pain and, I think those are questions that many of the world's famous war photographers have faced and those who have uh, uh, taken photographs of things like famine and, and, and floods and you know the uh, impacts of uh, disasters of cyclone and tsunami so those are really really very hard questions I'm sure you've dealt with some of those yourself so I'm going to just thank you and thank you Sukrit very much for organizing this evening and to the audience um, the recording will be available uh, so quick, will you you'll share be sharing that later and uh, look forward to hearing more and seeing more of your work in, in due course of time. Thank you again. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much.